Welcome to Amy's Knit Lab. This is my YouTube channel where I host fiber chats and knit nights and talk about all things La Bien Aime related. Um, in today's chat, we will be joined by Susan Chin and Inya Sang. These are two designers that I had the pleasure of working with for my new book, Neons and Neutrals, which was released in March 2023. So just, uh, just like over a month ago. I am joined here with Julia Taylor, who is my communications assistant at La Bien Aime, and my name is Amy Gilles. I am the founder and creative director of La Bien Aime. Super excited to be back for this new version of kind of our knit nights, but we're turning them into fiber chats and conversations with um, knitters from our industry. So today we will be joined by the designers of Ali Co and Darta. And as a special treat, we'll get to meet their test knitters for these two designs. So this is a new format. We are pre-recording. So when, when, you, when this version comes out, it will be coming out as a YouTube premiere. So welcome to our YouTube premiere of a conversation with designers from Neons and Neutrals with me, Amy Gilles, and Julia Taylor. Today, we have the pleasure of having Inya Sang and Susan Chin. And if you guys like this format, please subscribe down below. There'll be a subscribe button for you to join in and subscribe to our newsletter. So let me get ourselves lined up here. We're going to start with Susan. There's Susan. And we're going to start with Letitia. There we go. So Susan Chin, you joined us for this Neons and Neutrals adventure. Um, can you tell us how you came to the idea of this design for Alico um, for Neons and Neutrals. But before we do that, let me ask you a question to introduce yourself. I'm sorry. Introduce yourself and tell us about yourself. Okay, so my name is Susan and I am at Knit Frog Repeat on Instagram and Ravelry. So I think I've been knitting since I was around 16 and crocheting probably 10 years before that. So I'm a lifer essentially. And as far as Aliquot and the concept of it, I've just been tinkering a little bit with some stitch sequences and adding colors for both knitting and crochet. And what ended up happening was these two were developed out of um, essentially a modified mosaic in crochet as well as a modified uh, slip stitch sequence in knitting. And then when I saw your um, request for design submissions for the second book, it just kind of came all together. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is where these two stitches are now to be paired. And the idea just kind of free fell into place and then sent you an email and said, hey, Amy, can I do a combo thing? And you said yes. So off it went. That's kind of how it happened. It was a little bit random, a little bit all over the place, a little bit organic. I really loved your submission because it caught my attention right away. I feel like a cowl is a super wearable piece that a lot of people can integrate into their um, wardrobe really quickly. That's exactly what I was looking for when I was looking at the submissions. And then the added bonus of yours was the knitting and the crochet aspects of it. And I really love that. I thought that was super cool. I'm going to throw up really quick a slide here um, that I made for, for Aliko. So I, I'm pronouncing it Aliko. <laughs> and can you, how did you pronounce it, Susan? Well, for, I think, I think it's an American word or an English word as opposed to a French word, but it certainly has a bit of a French feel to it. So. However you pronounce it is fine, but I think in the science community, it is aliquot. So it's Aliquot. a segment of a, a portion of a whole is really what the term means. Julie, Julie and I are both cracking up right now because we've just been <laughs> going around saying alico. It absolutely sounds like a French word. <laughs> well, now you have a new word in French. No, I love it. I love it. I love it so much. Okay, so I threw up a slide here for everyone to see so that we can see some images from the book. Here we've got the version sizes. Correct me, Julie, if I'm incorrect. The size is one and two. Is that yes. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So the size one is the infinity loop, which is long and you can double around your neck. That's what Taylor's wearing here in this slide. And then the size two is just the single loop. I'm sorry, Yusra is wearing the double loop and Taylor is wearing the single loop version. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how, like, I just have a really quick question about gauge. How were you able to establish the gauge between knitting and crochet to make this work in this design? Yeah, that's definitely a huge um, consideration. We are pairing the two styles of stitching together. Um, for sure, you'll need something a little bit squishier in the knitting style in order to match it well with the crochet. So with this, I did two things. One is to choose a slightly thicker yarn weight for the knitted section. And also the knitted section has a couple of extra stitches. So yes, this is size one and two and then Initially with the submission, I thought we could just go with one and two or a size three version. And um, you wanted it all, Amy. So we did it all. And really fun is Letitia actually wasn't part of the test group, but she ended up doing a pattern preview for me and organically chose to do the size three. So when she pops back on screen, she'll have to show you what size three looks like compared to what one and two um, or like in the book, which is kind of fun, I thought, to have her on today as well. Well, as we wait for Letitia to pop back on, I am going to go back <laughs> to some of our questions. Hi, Letitia. Hi, sorry. Really, no problem. Really quick before I jump into other questions for Susan, can you show us your cowl up close? Would you mind like taking it off and holding it up to the screen? Yeah, so the one side, um, that's the crochet side. And then <laughs> the knit side. Oh, very cool. I really cool. like that it's um, kind of reversible. Yes, but it's reversible and different in each side. Which, how do you wear it? Can you show us how you style it? Yeah. <laughs> She's probably really hot. It's spring down there, I think. That's right. <laughs> It's still a little cold, but oh, I so love I that. Kind of, I like folding it so you can see both, and then, but that's lovely. That looks amazing like that. So tell us about the yarn that you use, Letitia. I use um, Yarnaceous um, for the crochet part. I used um, their sport weight, and then um, for the um, knit part, I used their DK weight, and it was the same color. <laughs> interesting I love that I love it so you have actually two different weights going on with yours yeah it's two different weights but it's the exact same colors I love that that's so cool you can really I guess if I look at it closely I can tell that that's a, the other side is DK weight but it works out really well for this cowl so for the design the actual design inspiration Susan were you was there anything that influenced you for this you know, it's kind of hard to pinpoint because it's sort of um, a little bit of a timeline and you kind of pick up little things as you go. And then when you revisit some of these ideas, whether it's at the forefront of your mind or in the background, sometimes they kind of just filter through and distill and come together. So a lot of this process was really about that. I did develop the stitch sequence for the knitting as well as the crochet relatively at the same time, but independent of each other so the idea was never to put them together from the get-go it wasn't until literally when I saw your um call for submissions that I I just knew okay these two are going together I haven't quite figured out how clearly there's the gauge thing how do you separate the different segments is it going to be done in the round you know all of those things need to be answered but I just knew right away they would be a good fit as long as you were okay with having some crochet in the book so oh, yeah it all <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I really love that. I really loved how you integrated knitting and crochet. Um, why did you choose Emyak for the secondary yarn? For the second well, sample? Most people know that I've been working with Paola for a few years now, where I've been knitting and crocheting um, a lot of her samples for her. So most of this was during the start of pretty much, I think, a year into COVID was when I started doing some samples for her. So it just was like a natural transition. And being that this was a collaborative um, theme with the book, 
it only made sense. Like, of course, if it wasn't your yarn, it had to be my ax yarn. I love that. I love that. Also, I feel like Paola's palette kind of fits into the neutral zone of the book as well. Um, you did pick a lighter palette for, in LVA, but they do have neon undertones. Um, it's hard to see in the photos, but peach sweater is, is actually quite neon when you see it. It has like a glow underneath it. So we were really happy with the two color choices that you picked. I feel like this is the kind of cowl where people can really pick two of their favorite colors and put them together and, and make something really special. Um, I just wanted to ask you um, if you had just one design to knit from neons and neutrals other than your own, which one would you knit? Well, that one was easy. I got to say, thanks to Paola, she chose the first pattern for me to knit for her as a sample. And which one is it? Yeah, it's Molig. So I'm super excited to do that one. I've done some swatching for it and it's really challenging. I love the color challenge part of it, just to pick out colors. We're at a point now where a lot of times Paola would be like, okay, this is sort of the color story I want. Can you come up with some combinations and she sent me quite a bit of yarn over the years that I'm able to pull palettes together and swatch um, and then go, OK, what do you think of these? So it's been a little more collaborative now as we progress through all this um, samples that I made for her. So I've just cast on and I'm just trying to um, sorting out gauge right now to make sure I'm on numbers. It's kind of hard when you're sending things away that you've made for someone else. You don't know how it's going to fit until they're wearing it. And then you see them on screen and go, oh, that's how it looks. <laughs> so. <laughs> And just try to hammer that down, but I'm I'm off and running with um, knitting on Molig right now. Wow, I'm super excited to see your Molig hat. I can't wait. I'm sure that pa Paola will tag us on Instagram, so I can't wait to see that. That's exciting. Well, I, you just answered my question. What are you working on right now? Any exciting projects? So that sounds super exciting to see. Well, that's that's one of them. But obviously, because I've tested it a lot for Stephen over the years, did you want to see some dog sweaters? Oh, my God. I think, yes. Everybody yes. would love to see dog sweaters. <laughs> you say no to that. Um, yeah, so these ones have not published just yet, but there's been a lot of sneak peek photos from Steven's Instagram site as well as his dog's Instagram site as well. And it's kind of funny because he's got a big black dog that's a boy and a smaller girl dog that's blonde. And I have a similar pairing here. So I've got a way bigger black dog that's a boy and a much smaller girl dog that's blonde. So it's kind of funny. We have like alternate universe uh, dogs, essentially. <laughs> but, so I'll just show you the ones that I've done where he's done sneak peeks himself. Okay. And um, I'm not sure which one is published next. It's just kind of um, just go with the flow. It's no big deal. But this one is the brioche one for the big guy. Oh, so cute. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's almost the size of a child's sweater. <laughs> what kind of <laughs> dog do you have? So big guy is a Bouvier, um, a French word, but not of French origin. <laughs> and the little one is a Shih Tzu. So look at how much smaller this is. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Is that cute? Are they the reverse? So the small ones, like the reverse colors is the big one? Oh no. Okay. I can see now. Yeah, not quite, but it's a similar color palette. So it's been really fun to play with it. Yeah. And the fun thing with this small one is I decided partway through that I would just switch the main rib color with the background color along the bottom, which is easy to see on screen. But oddly enough, it's even easier to see when I flip it inside out. Oh, yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Nice. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So that great. I love it. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So this is the brioche one. And then I have just the small ones. Um, textured oh, it's a little Dustin sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish I test knitted all of his sweaters now and have matching sweaters. So the three of us can match. Not that those two ones wear sweaters. <laughs> they just suffer through it with me. So they're, they've been really patient. So here's Oh my goodness. One. That is adorable. <laughs> It makes you want to get a dog. I mean, there have been lots of conversations about dogs around here at LBA. Yes, we little... all want to get dogs and knit sweaters for them. Yeah, yeah. Or I just there need to go. like knit a dog sweater for a friend. I think I just need to get it out of my system. 
I right? think I'll knit one I mean, for my cat, even even if it never wears it. <laughs> oh, I think some people are. Well, that's the same with me, Julia. There's no crime in that. I say go for it. Knit one for your all your cats. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, so I think that we're going to move on to let Julia ask Letitia some questions about being a test knitter. Hi, Letitia again. Hi. It's so lovely to meet you. Um, so uh, we would like to know a little bit more about you. So could you please introduce yourself? Let us know where you're coming from and how long you have been knitting. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm Letitia. Um, I live near Seattle, um, Washington um, in the U.S., and um, I have been knitting for just a little over a year, <laughs> but I've been crocheting what? since I was about five. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And so what made you become a knitter then? Because you've been a crocheter. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted to learn, um, but my best friend, um, we've quilted for forever. That's how we met. And um she started knitting during the pandemic and stuff. And um, so she just wanted me to learn. And so we could knit together. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Oh, I love that. Yay. And and since then, are you like a, a knitter with a capital K or? Yeah. Um, my favorite thing to knit, honestly, is socks. <laughs> awesome. We yeah. won't so, say no um, to that. Yeah. So I've just been knitting tons of socks. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Success. Trying to get Susan to knit some, but you know. <laughs> so let's back up a second. Her best friend doesn't even like knitting socks and they're still friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I just want to interject really quick. Susan, why don't you knit socks? <laughs> you know, I actually don't even like knitting socks. So, or wearing socks. Pardon me. I've never knitted socks, I should say. I don't like wearing socks. And the only time I ever knit socks was because I was so keen on how a flatbed knitting machine knitted a socks. Mm -hmm. knitted a sock and then seamed it up so I went to a workshop where they did that and I went home and set up my machine and knitted the entire socks without even caring about gauge I was just more keen on the technique yeah so that was the only time that I was inspired to knit socks and for the longest time I thought this is great because Stephen will never design socks he has them up until now <laughs> how what doesn't even ask me to make socks I'm like I am totally in the right place and then what does Stephen do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bizarre, box, but I haven't joined him I haven't joined that yet but seriously Letitia and her friend um as much as she likes knitting socks the other one doesn't so at least I have her <laughs> friend in company you guys heard her say I haven't joined you yet so yes. I know so I'm, I'm working right? on it I'm working on it <laughs> all right Letitia keep working on it. we want all the sock knitters to be knitting socks I wasn't a sock knitter for a very long time and Amy you know she she managed now I'm a sock knitter so you know there is hope well you know you can always crochet socks too so it's true it's I would have to like to wear socks first <laughs> I think I'm like you dog <laughs> I'm like you I like to be barefoot if I could live barefoot like all the time I would love that <laughs> but there's nothing better than wearing a pair of hand knit socks when you're hiking like you have to wear hiking boots inside hiking boots it feels wonderful mm -hmm. so mm. just saying <laughs> 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 okay, Leticia. Um, so uh, we are curious and we would like to know what do you do for a living when you're not test knitting? I actually work for um, Washington State um, for the okay. um, the state parks. Okay. Very cool. Like in parks and recreation? Yeah. Yeah. I'm an administrative <laughs> assistant. So for six different parks. How fun awesome. is your office? Is your office fun like in Parks and Rec? <laughs> no, not quite, because it's a state <laughs> government. <laughs> but uh, but we do have lots of good views and stuff. So it's it's wow. and everything's different. So it's nice and get to see different parks and travel. That's so. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so why did you become a test knitter? Because <laughs> Susan asked me. To <laughs> 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 um yeah pretty much because I can crochet and you know knit now too so um it was a it was, Susan's was my first one doing um oh, doing it and it was fun so I really enjoyed it do you have plans to do more test knits yes definitely <laughs> okay anything Probably socks <laughs> yes good idea <laughs> uh and 
what have you been working on recently? Um, well, I just finished um the, the uh, um this cowl. Wow. So it was the simply fun um cowl by uh um Paper Daisy, I believe it was. Is it like a mystery cow where they released? Yeah, it was a mystery cow. So it was my first Whoa. one. How fun. So. I love that. That's a great way to try out different knitting motifs and techniques. Well, and I liked it because it was only using mini skeins. So it was only five mini skeins. So I didn't yeah. have a lot invested into it if I didn't like it. <laughs> but also the that shape part of it looks super easy to wear. It just keeps yeah. you warm here. Oh, fun. Yeah. Okay. And then we have like a funny little question. If you okay. were a knitting technique, which one would you be? <laughs> um, considering I just, I don't know too many techniques. <laughs> um, this so could you be crochet, crochet too. too. <laughs> um, that is a hard one. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Well, we can keep back to you. Okay. Yeah. How about you, Susan? If you could be a knit technique or a crochet technique, which one would you be? Well, for knitting, it's sort of a split between brioche. That's really one of my top passions. And um, a slipped selvage edge stitch. I don't know why, but every time I make one of those, it just kind of just fills the bucket. I'm so happy with how it looks and how that simple technique does a huge um, difference. Like it makes a huge difference to your edges. So yeah, it absolutely it does. Super satisfying mm -hmm. and beautiful. Oh, That's and amazing. for crochet, it would be the reverse single crochet stitch. <laughs> I don't even crochet well enough to, Me neither. to imagine that. <laughs> or, or I would have to say, um, I'm sorry, you'll have to Correct my pronunciation for your name, Ines. How do you say your name? Ines. Ines. Okay, so yes. I love the way you crochet baubles. So I would say that would be the oh, other thing yeah. I love about crochet. crochet right. Ines crochets her <laughs> baubles in her shawls and ties it down. That's true. For fashion. Good. I'm going to have to go review now. I'm going to pull awesome. out the samples that I have from Ines yeah. that has baubles in them now and be like, what's, what's so different about this one? That's wonderful. Wonderful. Julia, let's break the ice. What would what technique would you be? Oh, I would definitely be brioche because it's plump, you know, like I am. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's um, it looks complicated, but it actually is very easy. Um, and I think that, you know, I don't look very complicated, but I think I'm an easygoing person. And I think brioche is is that, too. So, you know, that's what I like about it. <laughs> I love that. That's what easy. about you, Amy? Um, right now, in this moment, I'm all about the rib stitch. I just the rib pattern. Knit, one by one ribbing is making me super happy. That's what I happen to be knitting right now <laughs> in my knitting. So I'm just doing one by one ribbing back and forth, and it's giving me this good rhythm that I really enjoy knitting. So mm -hmm. I have to say I'm also doing one by one ribbing and I wanted to show because <laughs> I've just cast on Darta by Ines. <laughs> and so I'm on my ribbing for Darta. Yay, that's so nice. That's mm. actually kind of funny because that's what I'm doing too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, hold on. Let me hold up my one by one ribbing. <laughs> Everyone show your ribbing. <laughs> And I'm doing a little intarsia in the round on mine. So it's going to be like, <laughs> I don't know. There's just something very relaxing and rhythmic about one by one ribbing. I really like knitting it. So yeah, yeah. me too. And it's easy so, to do when you're talking. <laughs> yes, definitely. But though sometimes I have to pay attention because I will accidentally knit too. <laughs> off and then have to go all the way back and do it again so <laughs> anyways it's been a long time since I've been to a knit night you know COVID happened and my knit nights ended and I haven't gone back to knitting with people and I find now that when I start to go to events and I knit with people I'm like actually like wait a minute this is too complicated of a project <laughs> I need just a like a vanilla sock in the round to knit you're so. just so used to knitting by yourself and being by yourself from the yeah, time I did I really got yeah yeah 
All right, ladies, we're going to take a small break. So we're back now with Inya Sang, who is the designer of Darda from my new book, Neons and Neutrals, and her special test knitter, Kelly Chu. Um, I thought that we would take a moment to get to know Inyes a little bit. Inyes, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit and tell us about yourself as a knitter? Mm -hmm. So um, I was born and raised in Latvia. It's a small country in um, northern part of Europe along Baltic Sea it was a very rich knitting tradition, specifically stranded color work mitten tradition, which I have here to show you too, something like this. Oh, yeah. These are all hand knit mittens. And um, then um, after graduating university, I decided to move away. So I moved to Shanghai to work as a translator and later got another degree in interior design. So I was working there for 10 years before again uprooting myself and um, getting married and moving to Vancouver, Canada, where I live now. So um, knitting for me was always with me, with my family. My Both of my grandmothers were knitting. Um, my mom was a great knitter. So, and we also had knitting classes at school. This was a um, mandatory curriculum in uh, middle school to learn to knit the traditional structure of, um, learn the traditional structure of Latvian mittens and socks. But to say that that, so to say that I've been knitting for all my life would not be kind of true because I was knitting for those couple of years when I had to knit. And then I took a break until um, my son was born. Mm. And it was a really hard time for me because I basically, I stopped working and I was thrown from this very creative and very fast paced environment in Shanghai to actually care, taking care of somebody for 24 seven. Mm. at home in very kind of enclosed environment so um knitting kind of naturally organically came back to me as a something as a creative outlet and I didn't start with designing I started with just knitting things for my son and then it kind of grew into a little kind of venture where I was doing custom orders for other people and knitting small things and designing small things for other small people <laughs> for, yeah. for the kids and I still, I think I still have prototypes at home, which I was doing. And it was kind of gave me that first push in design that actually I was creating something, not just replicating. And here are some of the small things I did long time ago, but it was, it kind of gave me some kind of creative outlet and my own time, which I, at that point, I thought I was losing already was uh, while taking care of my son, especially for the first year. But then after maybe two years, I realized that I was starting to basically replicating the same thing all over and over again, since it was just custom orders for other people. And then I kind of started thinking, what if I just design? <laughs> because I like always, I like some, I'm something new. I like to create something new constantly. And I think the knitting design gives me that outlet. And yeah, I'm really happy. I'm kind of slow designer compared to other people. I design very few items, let's say a year. I like to take a long time to evaluate the stitches, evaluate the yarn to find, in my opinion, in my like perfect stitch for the perfect yarn. And I really, for me, it really takes a lot of time and I really appreciate people who I work with who have patience and understanding for this kind of approach. Well, that was the case for neons and neutrals. We had a really a semi, a fairly long deadline for the book. It's not like a magazine where yeah. things are kind of coming out every three months or every yes. four months. Um, and I was really, I was really pleased to work with you on this project. Um, can you talk a little bit about your inspiration for DARTA? Oh, that's also, that's a um, story. It started actually four or five years ago with another idea. And this little swatch, this little swatch somewhere here. Yeah, okay. This swatch here. Um, it was um, submission for another magazine, totally different kind of design. But the idea of 
holding two yarns together and having um ruffle in single lace weight yarn was the same. However, design was totally different, idea was different. It was not accepted, so it went into my I call it um happy rejects folder. <laughs> so I have all... <laughs> because these ideas I still want to turn go, mm, kind of go back to them and maybe um explore them more something that i think is worth working on later maybe down the road and when your call for neons and neutrals came out is we just yes this is exactly what this is for can of you course, hold the swatch up again one more time because i was actually doing something else there so yeah. we can have a little so detail nice. the same idea the same um pearl the same twisted rib knit stitch column and the same attached technique mm -hmm. for the ruffle and same, but this is done in mohair, and there is a big difference between mohair and um, uh, suri alpaca, which is, and this is a ruffle for Darta. <laughs> this is a finish. This is a bit different, and so yeah, so the idea came back immediately, and I wanted to create a sweater that is. That's why I call it a blouse, not a sweater. I wanted lightweight, uh, very neutral, but I wanted the ruffles to be kind of like a highlighting point and having them into the speckled yarn that kind of has this watercolor effect kind mm -hmm. of springy light watercolor effect it was and and that yarn was perfect for it and like yeah so thank you for giving me this opportunity to actually create it and 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 you're welcome and work, just gonna, work on this i'm gonna yeah. share really quick the slide that i prepared so that we can see more in depth mm -hmm. the ruffle difference so the slide that I'm showing yeah. has got in the main image, the sample that Inez was showing in her swatch, we using the Kumo for the ruffles. And then the upper image in the upper right hand corner is using a mohair silk for the ruffles. And this is showing what um, Inez was talking about, this kind of watercolor feel that you get from both of the yarns. Um, I really loved having the option of making a second sample that was different than the original. Um, in the original sample, and yes, used um, Kumo, which is our alpaca silk base and Helix um, and Kumo for the body. Um, for the ruffles, she only used the Kumo. And then on the second sample, we used a mohair silk from Wandering Flock. Um, and it, it, it just makes the ruffle different and it speaks yeah, so to different nice. knitters. Yeah. Um, it's been really fun, like taking this sample out on tour because people will be like, oh, I can't, I don't want to wear alpaca. But then like when we show them the mohair version, they're like, yay, you know, yeah. and, and vice versa for people who yeah. are like, I can't wear mohair. And they're yes, super definitely. excited about the alpaca version. So that was lovely. Um, I have the same question that I asked Susan. So if you had just one design to knit from neons and neutrals, which one would it be? That must be a show. Because I like there's no such thing as too many shows and um I really love Julia Wilkins punct. Yes. Punct show yeah. with the uh, colorful uh, dots over yeah. the, I really like the technique. I really like the idea of how we can um kind of choose different colors and choose different like and I really like the neons in punk. So I think this is and it's light. It's it's a light, very springy show. I I really, really like it. It's really great because both Punked and Darda are perfect canvases for either doing a neons or neutral palette. Yeah. Like you could really play around with the colors for the ruffles and a lot of interesting things that I've seen, like while I've been out on tours, people generally make the sweater more neutral and they use the ruffle as a, yeah. an opportunity to push them towards a color that they probably would <laughs> never knit with or wear. And so that's yeah, really- Yeah, and I was funny. thinking was uh, Julia Wilkins Punked is the same. I will definitely- make it neutral mm -hmm. that the base that the main body i would make neutral but just enough uh neon colors in those little um accent points would be perfect i agree i yeah. agree mm -hmm. all right well i'm gonna let julia take over with some questions for yeah. kelly mm -hmm. hi, hi kelly. kelly nice to hi, meet julia. you nice <laughs> to meet you too <laughs> could you please introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and how long you've been knitting so my name's Kelly Chu. I live and knit on Wongle land in Sydney, Australia. Um, I've been knitting for a long time. I think my grandpa, my grandma taught me when I was little. Um, so the first thing I made was like this 
little teddy jumper thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then similar to um, Inez, we sort of had to do knitting a little bit in school. We, uh, mm. It was compulsory to make a scarf for one of the big camps that we go to, which is to Bathurst um, in year five of primary school. And then kind of just left it for ages. Um, and then my friends started having babies. So I started knitting again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that was maybe, yeah, I don't know, about eight years ago that I sort of mm-hmm. really got back into it again. Mm. Yeah. And so how did you become a test knitter for Data? Um, I think Ines just asked. I think I just got like a DM on my Instagram. Hey, do you want to do this? <laughs> it was um, all a little bit cloak and dagger as well because we wanted to keep every, yeah. all the details very, you yeah. know, secret. And I was excited because like I've done a couple of test nets for her and they've, um, uh, I think this was her first like sweater. Um mm-hmm otherwise I've just done shawls so yeah I was excited and it kind of for me when I looked at the initial picture reminded me of um cherry blossoms just the pink yes. color that she oh. used for her her one that's just the, one of the first things I thought of yeah mm. I'm, I'm gonna spotlight you really quick Kelly, yeah so you can have a look at your sweater hold on oh. you want to just stand up there we go we can see oh, oh yeah. I love it I love what yarn did you use so I've got it here it's uh, La Bienne May as well. Um, I, use, I used French grey. Yeah. This is parchment. Mm-hmm. Which, um, I held double. And then my ruffle colour is jas- Jasper. 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 Yeah. Really beautiful. Yeah. Because yeah. um, even though I love the look of the pinks, um, it's one of my no no wear colors. Purples, <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> so yeah, blues and greys are my safe place. So yeah, this is why I chose these. Yeah, lovely, That's lovely. awesome. Jasper is also just a perfect color to knit the ruffles because it's variegated. Yeah. It has speckles, yeah. so it was really doesn't need exciting. to be pink. Yeah. It just needs to be a bit changey and yeah, yeah. It was really exciting to knit that bit, actually, because, um, yeah, just seeing all the different colours come out in it. I was like, ooh. Mm. Okay. And so um, how long did have you been a test knitter? Mm. I think um, my first test knit was Anise's one. Anise's <laughs> one. Um, it was the Rasa, your Rasa, Rasa shawl? Rasa. Ah. Yeah. Rasa. Yeah. Um, I feel like my littlest one was like one year old, so maybe two and a bit years. Mm-hmm. Test knitting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I enjoy it. I like that it's um it's kind of like a cal, but a little bit secret. Um, but you actually kind of get to meet people a little bit more, whereas mm-hmm. cows are just so much more like they're just too big. You often don't really get to yeah. meet mm-hmm. people as such. Yeah. And it's more of a collaborative experience as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Feels mm. like you're helping and contributing in some way. And that's yeah. why we mm. also kind of like, I like to um, make the test and it's like kind of like collaborative, kind of like a small cow, but we get to know each other and we talk about mm-hmm. things. It's, it's really, it's nice kind of safe environment. Mm. Yeah. It's lovely. That's lovely. And so what have you been working on recently, Kelly? Uh, so recently I've been working on this which is um, The Sun Up on 82nd by Jen Paracini. Ooh. I'm pronouncing her name right. Um, it's meant to be some, like, stuff held double. Um, I'm using Isaya Eco Baby, though, because I found it really oh. interesting in the yarn shop how it's, like, this chainette thing. Yeah. Mm. I knit a, my kid a sweater, so now we're going to be matchy-matchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Lovely. Getting closer, yeah. Yeah. And so last question. If you were a knitting technique, which one would you be? Oh, I was thinking about this when you asked. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say maybe brioche as well, like you did. Um, How many brioche because... on this episode? <laughs> <laughs> I think because maybe it's the Gemini in me. I feel like there's two sides to me that are a bit similar but a bit different. Um, so I feel like I've got my work side, um, which is very different, and then I've got my crafty side. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably go 
brioche. The other oh, one I was that's... thinking of was maybe cable because I do feel like I'm just rushing everywhere with little kids. <laughs> You're going in all the different <laughs> yeah. directions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to bring Susan in for this because I have two more questions and this is for everybody. So we brought everyone together. There we are. Um, so we asked you like, what would be your stitch that would represent you? What The next question I have is, what is your stitch arch nemesis what is the villain in your knitting story like the one thing that you're like oh never gonna knit that or i'll start because mine's really funny i love hate kitchener stitch like i love it when i do it right and i hate starting it because i always mess up right when i'm starting and i don't know why i always have to look it up for some reason my mind cannot memorize the kitchener stitch and i always have to look up a little a little like spec you know like so that's my little I guess it's like a faux nemesis but I always end up conquering it but it's always in the beginning I'm like oh catch your stitch <laughs> all right let's go with Kelly oh what would I say Siri doesn't understand probably um <laughs> sorry my, my <laughs> Apple watch, like, <laughs> probably probably in Taja, like I haven't done much of it. Um, I think I've only done it really once and it was a simple, like it was just one section of it, so it was okay. But, yeah, I think in Taja would be, any time I see that I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah. Okay, fair. What about you and yes? So I think I have to go to with Kitchener Stitch too because this is the only thing I remember from all my time when I was designing but I really dreaded it. Yeah. And it was in one of my designs. And no matter how much I kind of like followed the rules, it's still I still kept have to keep um kind of like checking the notes how to do it. And I said if I don't have to do it, I will never do it again. Are you one of those people who does Kitchener stitch and you like can't be talked to? Like I literally will be doing it. Oh no, like, absolutely. It's quiet. It has to be quiet. No people around. Yeah. Yeah. Same for me. Yeah, it's, uh, so, so instead of your nemesis stitch, which knit pattern or knit stitch could you be that would represent you? And yes. Oh, that's hands down um, stranded color knitting. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I just love, I love combination of colors. I like gray. I kind of gray is my number one color, but I really love like two or three colors together. I love the contrast. I love the stronger contrast. I love the very light contrast. I like to kind of explore them. It's just like, yeah, stranded knitting is all the way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good yeah. to know. All right, Susan, what is your like arch nemesis stitch or maybe crochet technique? Uh, I think in general, I just love making. So basically, if you give me something to do, I will take it and run with it. As you saw when I made 15 million swatches for Aliqua. So yeah. <laughs> overall, I don't object to too much, but certainly the one thing I wrestle with the most would be um, lace work that has lace happening on each row. So mm. I find that extremely challenging. It's just, a, it's hard for me to get my mind around it and to read my fabric on the wrong yeah. side I find it tough to the point where I got a little desperate on this even where I um started knitting left-handed so I can look at my fabric right on the right side <laughs> instead of having to fight through reading the fabric on the wrong side yeah so I, I try to do that every once in a while um just to you know build up that muscle a little bit and, and cross my fingers it gets a little bit easier every time um so far not yet but I'll <laughs> keep working on it I feel you on that too. I don't really like lace on the wrong side. I try to avoid, if patterns say that they have lace on the wrong side, I kind of move on to a new pattern because I'm like, mm -mm, it's a little too much for me. What about you, Julia? What's your, what's your arch nemesis stitch? Well, uh, no offense, Susan, but I think I might have to say crochet. <laughs> I'm going to unfriend you. <laughs> Sorry. No, I can do a granny square and that's it. So I've been crocheting a granny square. I think now it's like up to here and I always forget how to do corners and everything. And it's so, so messy. So I think crochet is my 
knitting nemesis, <laughs> knitting fine. I just learned tubular bind off this weekend or a couple of days ago. I had never done it. And so I feel like any knitting technique I can, you know, learn and conquer. No problem. Crochet just feels so awkward. I don't know. Can't do crochet. <laughs> Maybe one day. I just need to practice, but ugh, no. I'll give you Zoom me. lessons. <laughs> Maybe I'll sit oh, in on you know what? Zoom lesson. <laughs> I will learn crochet when you knit socks. Oh my gosh, that's a tall ass. <laughs> Little busy, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that I would start. I just thought of this right away. I thought we'd go around really quick and talk about maybe a design that's caught your attention recently. And so I'm gonna start with um I'm gonna join this like knit along called the best vest knit along with James Watts. I've been kind of obsessed with vests lately, and he just kind of came out with a new design called Best Vest in Wensley Worsted. And I think I'm going to do mine in Corey Worsted, but I think I'm going to knit myself a little deep neck vest. So that pattern's kind of been on my radar lately. Um, Julia, what's been on your radar lately? It's really hard. I don't want to appear like, you know, this is not true because it absolutely is for me. It's pretty much all the patterns in the book <laughs> because, and I mean, because I've been working on the book with you, Amy, for a little while, but now we just did the pop-up and we had all the trunk show there. So all the samples and we spent two weeks helping people find the perfect yarn for their projects and stuff. And it just, it gave us so many ideas. Uh, every day we were photographing yarn combos, you know, that's just what we did for two weeks straight. So I have so, so many ideas of what to knit next and I think I'm gonna have to go you know just knit one of each patterns in the book because I haven't done that yet and you know so everything <laughs> I love that answer obviously I'm knitting two for me the second samples are pretty much all the samples that are in my size so I'll be okay. knitting like third samples now so I'm kind of going through and working on that but we'll talk about that in a later chat as we get to <laughs> Kelly what have you seen lately that's kind of caught your attention um so in Australia we've got this Aussie knitters discord thing and we've got an upcoming cal signing end of this month for Japanese designs so oh. one that's caught my eye recently is the Flores sweater by Eri Shimizu um, so I'm quite keen on that one. And then I literally just this morning saved a picture someone posted on Instagram of the Ridge sweater by Hiromi. Okay. I don't know her last oh. name. But, it, yeah, it looks just really chic and just beautiful. Yeah. So those we'll are have to look those up, Julia. Plus, yes. for everyone who's tuning in now, because this will be coming out as a YouTube live, we will have done our research and got all those. There would be notes and links to everything. <laughs> and we'll be sticking those down in the in the comments below. All right, and yes, your turn. What's caught your attention recently? So um, it's not very new pattern, but it's always on my radar. And I kind of think I hope to knit it someday soon. It's, I think her name is Anne Wenzel. And mm. the sweater name is Robinia. Oh, yeah. It was a little scallops here. Yeah, the little yeah. scallops. So cute. Yeah. I love that one too. It's, yeah. And I also like the, 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 the way you can customize it you can i think she made also one is just like two colors and one is with different uh, color scallops all over so I, I really like it and i just like i'm really kind of attracted to scallops and all these kind of cute ridges so <laughs> it's I, I true it's them. true you've done some shawl designs for us that mm. feature some of those scallops yes. as well here they are uh, yeah <laughs> yeah the, the, yeah, the yeah, that's wonderful. All right, Susan, what's been, what's been on your radar lately, knit-wise or crochet-wise? Oh, that's really hard. Um, I'm really grateful in a way that I have uh, assignments and deadlines. So I'm super happy, you know, again, process maker, right? So I'm really happy to do all that. But certainly anytime there's like an interesting technique, even if I don't make it, I'm always interested in researching it total stitch nerd when it comes to anything I love that about you. crochet so but right now like I just finished a crochet project it's a stuffy and the designer is um her company name is Lolly Lala and I just love the way she does really? her construction yeah, and I also finished another crochet stuffy by Vanessa Munchi again beautiful construction interesting short row shaping so that's kind of been my recent 
little bit of obsession that I've been, that's been stewing in the back of my mind. If you want to see the crochet thing I just finished, it's a stuffy. You guys want to see it? Of course. Yes. I love it. I would love to see that. Yeah. Okay. First of all, there's an, it's a musical toy. <laughs> oh, wow. You hear it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me highlight you. <laughs> Hold on a second. I have to bring her back in. Add spotlight. There we go. It's an owl. Oh, my gosh. Who's the designer? So her... Her company name is Lali Lala and Lydia Trisalt. Can't pronounce her last name. She's uh, German and she's one of my favorite stuffy designers. So this is her most recent pattern. Um, look at all the little tiny details and it has a music box, which is licensed to her. And as the song plays, the letter gets sucked up, which is kind of fun. You also have the option of having a mouse attached instead. So the mouse would be sucked up as the music plays. Oh so she's had several themes of like stuffies with music, which is super cool. And I finally got to make one. And um, yeah, so this is the owl. I was super excited to make this. That's really cute. Really, really cute. I love that. Yeah, I'm very clever. I mean, just the way she has the nose featured in there nose actually goes all the way to here in order to create this ridge excellent just love it very cool very cool well let me bring everyone back up again so that we can say goodbye for this session of our chat a conversation around neons and neutrals i'm super excited to have the first designer susan chin and inya sang joining us for this and we will have more in this series coming very soon so we will include all of the contact information for the designers from Neons and Neutrals and everything will be down in the comments below for you guys to click through the links so you can follow along on the adventures of working with these designers. And I think that's it. I just want to say goodbye and that we will be back again um, with another episode very soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.